Well, one thing Titian Raider won't lack when he contests the three-year-old Colts and Geldings New South Wales Breeders Challenge Grand Final is experience. And I'm not referring to his 26 starts, but to his 81-year-old trainer, his 61-year-old driver, Glenn McElhinney, with the latter joining me to discuss Titian Raider's prospects. Well, Glenn, following the running of the two semi-finals here at Club Menangle last Saturday night, all the talk for the three-year-old Colts and Geldings title has been centred around Titian Raider and Captain Crusader. And that banter started with their trainers, Harry Martin and Ricky Orton, in the stabling area, with two horses virtually shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we were all cuddled up close to one another, yeah. What do you make of his performance? Glenn, he seems to be a foolproof horse. Uh, he's come a long way. Uh, he's a big gangly horse and he's starting to fill out. And yeah, he's was very impressive the other night. We uh, were a little bit worried last Wednesday. He was supposed to trial here and the trials got washed out. So um, we decided to go out on the track anyway and uh, worked him about four pegs off. And um, yeah, he went a mile and about 53. We were really happy the way he went. What's his strength, Glenn? Uh, he's just got a good high cruising speed. He can just, if they roll fast, he can go with them. And if they go a little bit slow, he can sprint. So he's a, he's a well-rounded horse at the moment. Well, one thing in your favour, right from the word go, was the barrier draw. It's about time he got one. He got one in the semi-final and he's got one today, uh, for Saturday night. So it's about time he's been drawing bad and he was winning. So hopefully we'll be able to utilise the barrier to the best of our advantage. And will that advantage be dictating the terms? Uh, you know, like they, in the other semi-final, they really burn early. They went 25-4. We didn't go that fast. So, you know, if we have to sit in behind them, you know, the horse has proven that he can sit on real good horses and come off their back and beat them. He's uh, sat on Tasty Delights back twice and come from behind him and beat him both times. So the horse has got a fair bit of quality about him. One thing he also has, Glenn has a great will to win. He certainly has, yes. Um, yeah, it was surprising. Um, I was a bit fortunate. I've had a lot to do with this horse from day one. Um, my daughter and I broke him in, so yeah, we've had a lot to do with him. But as far as driving him for Harry, it came around by mistake. Yeah, uh, Harry, David Morris is Harry's regular driver at this stage, and um, Harry had two in the same race, and um, Dave drove the other one, and I drove this one, and unfortunately the other horse has gone by the wayside a little bit, and, you know, and uh, Tisha and Rader kept going onwards, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to retain the drive. One of those situations, Glenn, being in the right spot at the right time. It certainly is, yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm Johnny on the spot. You know, I've been around for a long time, so I was lucky to get the drive. You've been around for a long time, but you've had a lot of success, including four Group 1 titles already. That experience going into Saturday night's Group 1, Glenn, certainly plays in your favour. It certainly does, yeah. Um, saying that, there's plenty in the race that have won Group 1 races. Ricky's won them, and... Luke McCarthy, you know, like he's got no peers as far as Group 1s go. So, you know, if we're not on our game on Saturday night, you know, we're, we're wasting our time. Both you and Harry have enjoyed fabulous careers, but it hasn't always been that way as far as being the centre of attention with harness racing. No, um, early on, um, you, you had to work to get money. Um, the way the harness racing set up now, you, your money's paid to you every fortnight. But when I first got into the sport, and same with Harry, uh, you know, you had to drive your own, train your own, and if you did get an outside drive, it was very rare that you got paid for it. So if you didn't have an outside job, you know, you, you'd never survive. So that's the, just the way we've been. And Harry's outside job, Glenn, can still be seen today. Yeah, yeah, there's, we, we're here at Menangle Park and there's plenty of houses here in Menangle Park that Harry can say he put the roof on them all, you know. He's a, he's a tiler by trade and a lot of people got him in to do the roofing for them. By all reports, an outstanding one at that. Yeah, he's a very good tradesman, yeah, yeah. They're still on there now, so he must have done a good job. How's the level of uh, confidence going into Saturday's race? Oh, very high. Like, the horse has won six in a row, and he's he's just improving all the time, and he showed it on Saturday night. Like, uh, he come off the gate 27-4, 28-9, 26-8, 26 9 home, and, you know, I, I still believe there was something in the tank. And Harry said there's still a lot of upside to this fellow and he's looking forward to the next season or two. Oh, yeah, I think next year, you know, you know, fingers crossed, don't jump too far ahead. But, you know, races like the Chariots of Fire are too deep down to the ground. Glenn, when I've had the pleasure to interview in the past and also your daughter, Tian, you send these interviews off to Ireland. Is there anyone in particular you want to give a cheerio call to the family back home? Yeah, not long ago, a couple of years ago, we had a, a relative come out from Ireland. His name's John. And, done a bit of a family catch up and yeah he, he keeps abreast of what's going on over here and you know hopefully once COVID settled down I'm going to get over there and have a few beers with him. 
Well, hopefully, Glenn, that spending money, the expenses will be paid via Titian Raider on Saturday night. We wish you all the very best of luck, as we do with all the participants. It's going to be a great race. It's probably one of the most talked about races on Saturday night's program. Yeah, I think the draws opened it up a bit. You know, if it's, it's, it's a little bit of a shame in one way that uh, Barroom Band has drawn out where he has, but, you know, it does make our jobs a little bit easier with him but have to do all the work to get across and try and be in the race and be competitive. Probably the, the fact that two local identities, two well-respected and liked local identities, look like fighting out the finish. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of banter going on and there still is, and I see Harry's put something on uh, social media today. So, yeah, he's, he's stoking the fire, old Harry. Well, Glenn, the very best of luck. Hopefully you have more luck than the South City Rabbitohs. Yeah, well, we don't want to run second. We want to run first.